Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome back. And you may notice things are looking a little bit different. I've got this little sort of stand over here for some spectators. I've moved the spawn point. And I've also got this scoreboard over here. Now, if you want your place to look exactly like mine, you notice I'm using the episode 12 underscore build file. Uh, I'll actually have a link to where you can download this file in the description of this video, so then you can have an exact copy of what I have. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be trying to get this scoreboard up and running with some information. Because at the moment, sure, we can click play, and we've kind of got a working game, right? We can uh, kick this ball into uh, the opposition's net. If we can uh, dodge the keeper, there we go, we've got it in. And yeah, we can get this message in the output. But we want really to get some feedback going on in our actual game. We don't want it all down in the output. Now, you may remember several episodes ago, we created this virtual game script. We had a loop going on and then we sort of imagined that there were some goals and so on. Well, we're going to be creating a similar script to this today. Um, but we're going to go and create a brand new script and uh, get started. Now, we're not actually going to be learning anything new today. We're just going to be putting together all the pieces we've learned so far. So I'm going to name this one Game Script. And the first thing I want to do is I need to create a variable so I can access this scoreboard. So you notice all this is, is it has a surface GUI and it has different labels inside of it. So in order to access them in our script, let's create a variable fully. Scoreboard GUI. So local scoreboard GUI equals workspace dot score dot scoreboard GUI. And then it probably would make sense to create a variable for each of these labels, because these are the ones I'm going to want to change. So we'll have one for the elf score equals scoreboard GUI dot score dot Elf score, pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to continue this for each of the labels now. There we go. Now we need to make sure, of course, that we're referring to the right location of this. So we can see that the gnome score is inside of the score frame. So that's an extra level we need to go down to access it. Whereas the status and timer, these are directly inside of scoreboard GUI. So make sure when we're declaring where these things are that we get the right location for it. If I put the wrong thing in, then it's not going to find it and it's going to cause an error. So assuming we've all got that correct, now let's go and create a little loop for ourselves. So we'll create a variable called minutes, local minutes equals zero. And then we want to go from zero to 90, don't we? So we can create a loop for that for i equals one 90 do and all we're going to do in here is we're going to output the value of the minutes into our timer at the top here actually i've used i i don't want to use i i want to use my minutes variable there we go and now in here i can say timer dot text because remember this is a text label so we want to change its text property equals and I don't want to set it straight to minutes because then it's just going to say zero. Whereas I want it to actually say time, colon, space, and then the number. So to do this, I'll put uh, quotation marks in. I'll put timer, colon, space. And then after my quotation marks, I'm just going to put a dot, dot. This adds the two strings together into one big lump of text that we can output. And then after that, we want to wait a short period. So let's create a variable called uh, time or a minute length, maybe minute length. Now, this will be equal to however long we want a minute to actually be in the game, because obviously we don't really want this entire game to last 90 minutes. That'd be quite long. So we'll maybe just do half a second. OK, so then we can just put wait minute length okay and then this will keep updating until it reaches 90 and then it'll exit the loop so let's click run and see if this is working for us 
if it updates, there we go. So we can see the time is counting up now. And every half second, it's going to update until it gets to 90. Let's speed things up a bit. There we go, the magic of video editing and we've reached 90, very good. So we probably want to have these scores update as well, don't we? So in order to do that, we're going to need to change our goal script. So we currently have one of these and we're detecting whenever the each goal is touched using the touched event and then resetting the ball position. Well, instead of having these all in separate scripts, what might now be a good idea is to try and collate everything into our one game script so we can have everything in one place. So what we should do is we're going to need to get these variables here, the ball and the original position and the goal and the goal, goal one and goal two. We're going to copy all of these over and we'll place them now into our game script. Okay, I'm just going to put them up that over here and I'm going to add local in front of each of these as well. There we go. And now I'm going to create an event. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. Instead of creating two different events like I did here, one for each goal. Instead, I'm just going to create the one event on the ball this time. So I'm going to say ball dot touched connect function. And then that's going to take the parameter or whatever fires that touched event. So it's going to be some kind of path or object that we'll then need to check. So we can see if that part equals equals goal one, then it's going to, going to want to have a goal of some sort. I'm going to want to do something. I'll just put this in as a comment. Else if part equals equals goal two, then you know, it's going to be the other team that scores. So there we go. We can have it all inside a single event now. Of course, we need to have this event before we put in the for loop. If we had it down here, then we wouldn't actually be running this code member until the loop has finished. So that's quite important. We put it before. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to avoid repeating myself too much. I'm going to create a separate function for scoring. So local function score and that's going to take one parameter which is going to be the team that we want to assign the goal to so i'm just going to put in team here and then in here we're going to make the the team dot uh, text equals team dot text plus one because this team that we're going to feed in is going to be the elf score or the name score, which if you remember are text labels. So we need to change the text property and then add one to it. After we've done that, we're going to want to reset the ball's position, aren't we? So we can say ball dot position equals original position, that variable we've created up here at the start. So it's going to go back to where it was at the start of the game. Then all we need to do is uh, fire off this function. So if part equals equals goal one, then let's check which one is goal one. Uh, goal one is the, the blues goal. So remember that would be a goal to the gnome rovers who play in white. Because remember they're going to be this side of the field and they're going to be scoring into the opposing team's net. So we're going to want to say if it's goal one that's been touched, then it's going to be a goal for the gnome team. What's the gnome score is the value you want to feed in there. The gnome score is the text label for the gnome rovers team. And then if it's goal two, then we want to score for the elf score the elf city team so now we've uh, we've got this in our main game script uh, let's go back and just uh, disable this goal script okay so i've got a few scripts in server script service i'm just going to disable the goal script one now because i've got it all inside game script let's click play and see if this is working for us okay here we are the timer is running along let's see if we can get the ball in 
And there we go. We got 1-0 to us. Straight away. And it's come straight back down again. And we can get a second goal. There we go. 2-0. Now, another thing that's happening, as you'll notice, when I push the ball into the net, uh, we've actually still got a lot of velocity on this ball. So we probably want to stop the velocity when we go back to the middle there. And maybe it would help to anchor the, the ball for a few seconds and then drop it. So there's a little bit of a pause. So let's do that, shall we? Inside our game script. When we score, uh, we will say ball dot anchored equals true. Set it to the original position. And then we want to change its velocity. So there's two properties we want for that. That will be, if I can find it, yeah. Assembly linear velocity and assembly angular velocity. So ball dot assembly linear velocity equals, and we'll notice this actually has three different values. Okay, it has an X, a Y, and a Z value. So I can't just put zero comma zero zero. Okay, that won't actually work. You see, I got a, a red underline. You can't set three values at once. What we have to do is this is something called a vector three value. So we put vector three dot new. And this is like a little function. It's what's known as a constructor. And this allows us to put those three values all in together like that. So we want the X, the Y and the Z value to all be set to zero. And then we're going to want to do the same thing for the assembly angular velocity as well. We can just copy and paste that if we want. So we set the all of the velocity back to zero. Then maybe we'll wait one second and then we're going to want to unanchor the ball. So we'll set this to false. Let's play now and see if that's working. Okay, the ball's dropped down. Let's give it a push. Push. And one, and it's waiting in the air and dropped down. And it's not spinning anywhere. It's not going wild. It's much more predictable, which is what we want. So we can apply the force back and then drop nice and smooth, much better. One final thing, maybe we'd like to have it pause when it reaches 45, because that's obviously the halfway point in a football game and you wouldn't normally keep going. So maybe we will have some kind of half time in our script. So inside our loop, let's say if minutes equals equals 45, then, and we're going to want to say, uh, we're going to change the status. Remember, we have this status down here, this status label. It's currently empty, but we could add in some text right down here. We could make it say half time or something. So let's say status dot text equals half time. And then we maybe will wait an extra an extra five seconds or something and while we're waiting we don't want them to be able to score either so we're probably going to want to anchor the ball now we could set the ball to anchored again here but what might be a better idea now instead of repeating ourselves all over again we should probably create another function for that so let's have another function right at the top local function and I'm just going to call this one reset ball okay and all this will do is I'm going to take out all of this now control x control v and now I can call this function reset ball from the score function and I can also call it again if it's half time and call it here now, obviously, uh, I can't use that wait anymore, can I? Because if I'm waiting after I have already dropped the ball, that's not going to work, is it? So instead, I could feed in a wait time parameter, and then I can wait for however long I like. So after they've scored, I probably only want to wait one second. But if it's uh, half time, instead, I want to wait five seconds before dropping the ball. Now, if we are setting the status here, then that means on the 46 minute, it's still going to say half time. So we're probably going to want to reset this at the start of each loop. So we can say status.text and we'll just set this to a blank string. 
And maybe we want to have the status message pop up when they score. So we can do this, copy that, and put it into our score function. And on the next line, we can just say goal. And so that's a bit of quite a bit of scripting there. Let's go back and see how all of that is working for us now. Ball drops to the ground. Let's see if we can score a goal. Push. There we go. 1-0. We've got to wait. Drops back down again. Oh, oh dear. I've missed. No. Come on. Get it in. Get it in. It's almost half time. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. And it goes back to the middle. we got to wait. And eventually it's going to drop back down. And then we can have another shot on goal. Hooray! Okay, so that's probably enough for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're just going to do some final finishing off, bring everything together, and uh, then we're going to be finished with our football game. So we're almost there. We've got our scoreboard working. We've just got a few little extra things to add. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, possibly the final episode. Goodbye.